Welcome to Coffee and Conversation with the What Now Movement. This is our December edition. We're looking to make sure that you are ready for 22. Here's the question. Are you ready for 22? That, that's something to think about. Hopefully after today, you'll, your answer will be a strong yes. So first, I need to introduce the team and give you an overview of the What Now movement. I know we've got some people who are new to the movement. So we'll start by introducing the team. I am Eric Twiggs. I am the president of the What Now movement. I'm also your procrastination prevention partner, author of The Discipline of Now, and host of the 30-Minute Hour podcast. I'm going to pass this around, and you'll get to know the rest of the What Now movement team, starting with Ted Fells. All right. Good morning. I'm Ted Fells. I am the vice president of strategy for the What Now movement, co uh, um host of the 30 minute hour podcast and then also the uh the president of new core vision incorporated in information technology and management consulting firm good morning fantastic good morning next dr sharon great saturday morning everyone i'm dr sharon vice president of the what now movement and wnm ventures llc and vice president of media and communications i'm also ceo of perfect time shp publishing editor-in-chief of Vision and Purpose Lifestyle Magazine Media. Welcome, everyone. All right. Uh, let's see, my Isha. Good morning, everybody. I am the Chief Marketing Officer of WNM Ventures. I'm also, I have my own marketing company, Customer First Marketing, and I just launched a Black-owned marketplace called Cuba. Welcome. Fantastic. And Dawn? Good morning, everybody. My name is Don Bornheimer. I'm a sales executive by day, and I am the chief movement officer for the WNM Ventures Group. Um, I focus on sales leadership and uh, any support for your teams. Excited to be here. All right. So, so now, those, again, those of you who are, are new to the movement, now you know the team, and I de definitely want to make sure you understand the backstory and the context of how we got to this point. So th this started at the beginning of the pandemic and to Ted Fells and Dr. Sharon and I, we were talking and we noticed a lot of people who said, you know, I've got this venture. I want to start. I want to write this book. I'm going to launch this podcast. I'm going to start this business. But I think I'm just going to wait until things get back to normal. And we looked at each other and we said, that's the last response you want to have. You should really be asking yourself, what now? And then that's when all the, the light bulbs went off and all the planets aligned. And, and we said, you know what? We need to join together and form something called the What Now Movement. And, and our mission is to inspire you to pivot whenever you face a crisis. Because guess what? At the time of this recording, we're dealing with a pandemic. What is it? The Omicron? Uh, it's it's going to get to Omega maybe. I don't know. But you, you de we're dealing with a crisis. But there's going to be other things that you deal with. There's going to be other challenges. And the key is instead of stopping and waiting until things get back to normal, the key is pivoting. And our goal is to inspire you to pivot when you face your next crisis. So that's the mission of the movement. That's why we're here. And we really we want to make sure we're engaging with you on a regular basis. Uh, I, I see quite a few What Now Movement members online. Uh, if you could make sure you're put, putting things in the comment and it, this is coffee in conversation. So hopefully you bought your coffee. Uh, and, and also we, we just hope that you bought your questions, right? If we want this to be a dialogue and that you, you walk away from this uh, better than when you started. Wait, 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 wait. It's a, is it coffee in conversations or did, was that some oatmeal or something you went to Maisha? I saw you, you get a, a scoop or something. You're on mute. You're on mute. 
I left my spoon in my Hampton University coffee mug, so I wanted to take it out before I took a sip. That's all. all right. I'm just making sure we didn't bring some breakfast. We might have to call it coffee conversation and, and breakfast next time. We could. Why not? Coffee conversation yeah. and breakfast. All we need is a breakfast sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So if you're a breakfast sponsor out there, please get with my Isha. And That's we'd right. love to like love bagels, to have you. Anything. There you go. Now, in all seriousness, if you are, feel free. You can email whatnowmovement at gmail.com. Uh, we, we have a sponsor for today's episode, which we'll be uh, we'll be talking about here in just a little bit. Uh, but we want to talk to you about getting ready for 22. Right. It, because, you know, Ted, it's funny, Ted and I, we talk about this all the time. And a lot of times we think that just because the year is different, that mm -hmm. things in our business is going to be different. Right. Mm -hmm. This is, oh, yeah, it's, it's a new year. This, this is going to be the year that I make X, Y, Z happen. That's it. I'm doing everything. January 1st, I'm going on this diet. I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to take this business to another level. I'm going to go see my mama more. Like, I'm going to do everything once January 1st comes. It's just going to just, everything's just going to switch at 12.01. So, you know, good luck with that. Right. And, and so so the key is, uh, it's so important that we need to be intentional, right? And, and we need to really have a plan. We need to have a vision. And I, I'm going to start, we're going to talk about getting ready for 22. And I'm going to talk about how do you get ready when it comes to, setting goals mm. right i'm going to talk about how do we set goals i i, I heard this interesting quote it was from james clear he's a, another author and he said that a lot of times we think we lack motivation but in reality we lack clarity right we think we're not motivated but the problem is we're not clear on where it is that we really want to go and, mm. and i always say and i said in my book yeah, clarity is the starting point of success so that if we want to be ready for 22, it's important that we're clear on where we want to go. And as far as setting goals, one thing I, I teach people is, again, I'm your procrastination prevention partner. When I'm working with people on goal setting and productivity, I have them fast forward to the future. Right. So let's say it's December 31st of 2022. And you're, you're talking to yourself. You're saying self. This has been the best year I've had. Mm. Wow, what a great year. This has just been outstanding. Yeah. Now you have to think about what are three specific things that you've accomplished? Give me three to five. Mm. Three, three to five specific things that you've accomplished to feel like this was the best year ever. Oh, my business hit XYZ. I, I paid down this line of credit. But whatever that specific thing is. Right, that, that'll help you to really get clear when you put yourself in the future. That helps you to get clear on those specific things that you want to accomplish in 2022. Now, I would also challenge you to take it a step further. Is to instead of just having goals for the entire year, because it's easy to lose momentum, is I would break them down into 90 day increments. So if you know what you want to accomplish for the year, take it a step further. If you mm. say my goal is to write a book, mm. okay, what, what are my goals for the next 90 days to get the book written? Mm. I was just going to ask you about that, that, Eric. I was going to say, why were we waiting a whole year to reflect on our goals, right? right. So I love that you just right. said that because for me, it's like break it down into smaller increments and have the opportunity yes. to reflect and pivot as you go. So by the time you get to the end of the year, you've done that process you know, four to six times already. So I love the idea of breaking it down by 90 day increments. Uh, Eric that. Watson jumped in the chat and said, you know, without goals, you are like a ship at sea with no destination. I mean, <laughs> it's true. It give you an opportunity to, to lean in and think about the direction you're moving and then you can reflect and evaluate. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, the, you know the other oh. thing, sorry, the other thing about the, the, the goals is, is how you're going to execute, right? I think every year we we come up with goals before the start of the year, these things that we're going to do. But the other thing is how am I going to actually execute them so that when you're in December 2022, that you 
that you've actually accomplished something versus getting ready to set some more goals for 2023. Sorry, Dr. Sharon. I, no, no, I only no. had to do <laughs> no, I, I'm gonna get it in here. I know I'm looking at everybody and everybody's ready, so I'm sorry. <laughs> no, because I love the conversation because as Eric started out, he started out talking about having a, a clear focus, basically. And I always say when the when the destination is clear, the pathway will appear. And so it's it's basically like a GPS. If you know your destination, then you can figure out how to get there, right? And so it's, it's exactly the same thing that Eric is saying. You have to know where it is that you want to go in order to define the pathway to get there. So um, I love that, Eric. And so and what, you said, what you said, Dr. Sharon, was tweetable. When, when your destination is clear, <laughs> the, path the path will appear. Exactly. I'm going to have to borrow that. When I'm out somewhere, I'm saying, it's like I always say. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. We drop gems all the time. We drop gems all the time. <laughs> One of the things I tell my clients and one of the things I do for them, uh, especially to be very concrete and discreet about the goals is to review their numbers from last year. And I know that, you know, sometimes I come into a client in the middle and I'm like, well, what's your goal? What's your sales goal? And they don't know. Well, how can I build a marketing plan or a strategy around, as Dr. Sharon said, well, we don't even know what we're trying to achieve. I could do a lot. I could get you up. But unless we're trying to say, I want to double last year's revenue, I want to triple last year's revenue. So looking at your sales, your profits, all of that comes into setting, especially for the, those of us that are in business, helps us achieve what we want to accomplish for next year. So that was my number one. Review last year's sales. <laughs> Absolutely. But, but if you think about it, if you take it from a standpoint of New Year's resolutions, why do they fail? Because you lose momentum. Right, you're fired up in the beginning, and I, I work with people, I work with clients, and it's April, and I'm like, "How you doing? How are you coming on your 2021 goals?" Hey, what were my goals again? <laughs> right. mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you lose momentum, but if you've got, if you're doing them in 90 day windows, you can keep the momentum. So you have the momentum when you start, and then as you start to get close to the deadline, you're like, "Man, I need to step my game up, or I'm not going to hit this." And then that new 90 day cycle starts over again. And you have the momentum of starting. So it's, 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 I'm just a big fan of breaking the, the bigger goal for the year into 90-day windows to help you to achieve that. Absolutely. Somebody recommended a few years back for me, and I think it works really well being in sales specifically, that I actually look at the beginning of the year being October 1st and not January 1st. Oh. Because there's a lot of people that desire to hit that reset button after the new year. And if you're selling to those people who are excited about jumping into the new year, you have to be ahead of them. So being willing to start your year in October, projecting into the upcoming year allows you to also be prepared to serve at a higher level of the people that are desiring to make those shifts and changes come January 1st. Mm -hmm. And so um, that really serves me in a lot of different ways. So I would invite those that are business owners, people that are looking to create and bring products to life that can serve people with their goals. And um, like having Maisha and others that do marketing and branding, really thinking about starting that work now um, in Q4 so that you're ready to hit the ground running in January. And then every year getting a little bit earlier um, until you can get to that October 1st kickoff. Yeah. That's a good no, idea. That's an excellent idea. I mean, because we're not all on the same calendar. Mm -hmm. So if you think about when did you get your first sale, what did you do to what, how did you accomplish that as the first year of your calendar? That changes everything. It really mm -hmm. does. I like that, Dawn. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, that, that's great. And now, so I, had a, I got a question this week. You know, we're talking about goal setting. So I did get a question on this and it was, Eric, what is your feeling on setting big audacious goals versus more realistic goals? I thought that's a great question. And I'm a fan of setting the big goals. And, and the reason being is big goals require big actions, right? So if you're, if you're someone that always thinks, okay, this has to be 100% realistic, whatever you define that to be, you'll be less likely to take action. But if you've got a big goal, if you've got a number and people are looking at you, like like I think, 
I think you should have at least, this is just my opinion, you should have at least one goal that when you, if you told somebody, they would look at you like you were crazy. Yeah. Yeah. At that's least one. an aspirational goal, right? Something yeah. that all the stars have to align for you to chase that down, but it gives you something to chase. Right. Right. I feel like listening to that question, Eric, makes me think that that person really needs to ground into growth mindset because really thinking about just the goal that you can see doesn't create the space for what's possible. Right. And no, they, always, right. they right. always say also that if the goal is can't be attainable with other people, it's too small. And so that's also something to think about as well, because if you can reach your goal with just yourself, your goal's not big enough. And so that's like a litmus test. You know, who else do I need to make this goal a reality? And if it's only you, it's probably not big enough. Yeah, I think the big dreams is what propels a lot of us. Um, you know, so the bigger, the better. And but let, I, I don't know if Roy Graffery is listening to this. Roy Graffery is one of my favorite people in the world. But by the time I end up talking to him, I went from doing a little marketing plan for some IT work to changing the world. So he makes me laugh because he's so visionary. So I, and I'm bringing up to say, sometimes it's the personality. Like, I want you to think big, but we got to start somewhere. <laughs> so you got to have that big, I want to be president of the United States. But recognize, going back to the 30, 60, 90 change in the calendar, you got to start with the little, the little goals, I guess that's the right way, the little things that we can accomplish to get you there. And I always say every I, every dream can be accomplished with a big idea and marketing, of course. But yeah, you know, you know, you, you know, it's you know, it's interesting. I, 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 I just truly believe in stretching yourself. You know, I was looking at something on LinkedIn, and they were showing there was a, a couple uh, CEOs of uh, African American CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, right? And they said, you know, there's not that many of them. Let's say it was like five or so, right? I was just looking at that, and I just went back to my team, and I said, you know, with that small amount of number of of African American CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, the chances of one of these big Fortune 500 companies reaching out to me and saying we want you to be the CEO is pretty slim. So we're gonna have to make my company a Fortune 500. <laughs> and, and and at that point, I looked at all their faces and no one shook, and they were all like, "All right, that's what we got to do." And that was the mindset. It was like, okay, I didn't know what it would take to be a fortune 500 company but i was like the mindset at that point was okay that's what we're gonna do we're not gonna wait for somebody to come and say okay ted come over here and be the ceo of this come over and be the ceo of, of walmart or whatever no we're going to turn new core vision into a fortune 500 company and start moving in that direction now you'll see you know within your team there'll be some of it like, oh, that's kind of big lofty goal but you know you can't get to and I look at it as sp in sports, right? You can't make a shot if you don't think you can make the shot, mm -hmm. right? If I shoot the ball, I don't care where I'm shooting it from the court. I'm expecting to make it. There's no need to toss it up there. And so I think that as you're making these goals, yes, you can, you know, you can put that goal out there that's big, that's going to push you and stretch your team, you know, but then also, you know, those goals that, you know, that you can, because I think a lot of times people need to see momentum, right? They need to see that you're getting some stuff done. You know, it's, you know, it's just like uh, you're helping someone to, to do a move at their house and they got all this stuff in the house and it's like, okay, until someone starts moving the first box, you're never going to get anywhere. They just look at the house and be like, man, it's a whole bunch of stuff that we got to move, right? And, and, and we're going to be here all day. No, first start moving some stuff, right? And before you know it, you clean the house out. So, yeah, I, I think it's a combination of, of, of both of having the big lofty goals, but then also doing some, you know, making some movement, you know, on some some small steps toward. And I think, Eric, what you said about quarterly, those quarterly uh, kind of checks is a, is, a, is a good thing, right? Because you'll see if you need to, you know, change, you know, change and pivot, but you at least see that your team, you know, you, your team, whatever is moving in the right direction. And that's where the reverse engineering comes in, right? So you set the goal and then you work backwards from there to figure out how you need to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Good stuff. So that's yeah, that's it on goal setting. And 
certainly if you've got questions, make sure you're putting those in the chat. Uh, if you, if you want to get them answered later, now is the time. You can always email whatnowmovement at gmail.com. We, we want to hear from you. This is a great opportunity right now to get some of your questions answered. Uh, we're we're going to pivot a little bit. I want to hear from Maisha. Uh, getting ready for 22. Uh, just some quick marketing tips that people need to be aware of to make sure they're ready. So quick marketing tips. So here we go. So the first thing, if you haven't gone digital yet, you need to go digital. And what that means is you need to work, get your analytics on your website. You need to know where your customers are. You need to create campaigns that get some awareness out. Uh, you need to make sure your social media is all connected to your website, to your LinkedIn, to your Instagram. All of these things are now working together to help you gather information and leads. And so for me, if you haven't gone digital in 2021, let's make going digital in 2022 part of your goals for this year. The other thing is just being consistent. We talked about that before. I cannot emphasize enough of you will get customers coming to you if you are consistent across all your uh, marketing efforts. I think Eric and Ted reached 1,000 downloads, 100,000 downloads this year. I would bet it's because every, what's, what's the time that y'all could do the 30 minute hour? Um, it's seven o'clock. They haven't missed a Monday at seven o'clock since. They do a great job of promoting their guests before and after. They are very consistent with that. And I think that contributed a lot to how they are able to achieve that goal. So go digital in 2022. If you do need help with that, we are, we are here to help you. I have a great digital partner who has helped us with our website and making sure we're found, even though sometimes we don't want to be found. But now University got so many hits when we were actively promoting that, but go digital in 2022. Uh, great comments, Maisha. And I did something that um, I always say that consistency compounds, mm -hmm. right? Because a, a lot of times we're looking for that silver bullet when it comes to marketing. What's the one thing I can do that's just going to take my business to the next level? It's like Maisha saying, you just have to be consistent over time. And if you have a silver bullet that works and you're consistent with it, I think a lot of times people try different things, right? And they don't give enough time to what is actually working. So for instance, we'll use the group. So we weren't collecting names. We weren't collecting people's names. So we were just arbitrarily just talking to people randomly. Once we started saying we need to make sure we create a system so that people know and get information from us that we want to deliver. We have built up that uh, our, mail, our, our, our database, I think over 50% over the last year. And we're constantly mining that and, and talking to you and trying to get you involved with what now movement. It wasn't being done before, but we are consistently doing that now. And we have a system set up to make sure that you hear from us. And that is just how we're gonna grow. The more people who know about your business, the better, of course. But if you have one thing that works, continue with it, then you can add something else to the plate. Then you can add something else to the plate. And that's what your marketing strategy needs to include. Mm -hmm. No, that's a great point, Maisha. I think one of the things that comes up for me listening to you speak too is the idea that people always gravitate towards the next best thing and they like, especially with social media, right? So as soon as something new comes out, they wanna go over there. But if you really think about where your audience is and where you wanna show up and be consistent, sometimes less is more in zoning in and saying, LinkedIn and Facebook are my primary audiences and I'm gonna do that really exceptionally. And I'm going to allow some of the others to be good for something else. And maybe at another time you introduce that, um, I think some of the platforms kind of cross over and share content across. How can you maximize the tools that you have, but also trying not to be everything to everybody and really speaking into your audience is so important. And I've learned so much from you just from partnering with you uh, through WNM and just looking at um, where we can grow together. So I think you bring up, uh, I'm sorry, you bring up a good important. point, a good point. And that's why you need analytics on your site and analytics. You can set that up yourself because analytics will tell you 
which platforms, where your customers are coming from. It will tell you the social media. It will tell you with, under the social media, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, all of that. So I always say, and I start my engagements with who, where, who, where, where why, how are our customers getting to us? Mm-hmm. If we understand who, if you, they say, wait, if you understand who your customers are, you're marketing to an audience that's interested already in what you have to say. So if you don't know who they are, you don't know where they're coming from, you're just throwing out stuff and hoping it hits. So if I can say this again, get Google Analytics on your site. I can help you look at the data so it makes sense to you. Don't go crazy because Google Analytics can be very big. But you want to know who your customers are in 2022. So go digital so that you can know who your customers are in 2022. And then you can know where you need to play because you know where your customers are coming from. If the website is your number one place, then you make sure your website is up to par. If Facebook is your number one platform, then play in Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you know, I, I, also, I also think that in in each of the platforms, there's a strategy, right? Because there's different people that like Facebook, most of your Facebook connections are your family and friends, right? LinkedIn connections, our business associates, right? They're thinking certain things. Your LinkedIn connections don't want to necessarily see what you're eating, what you have for lunch, or, or all your kids' pictures. I mean, you know, it's nice or whatever, but that's more Facebook, right? And so, if you look at each of those platforms and decide if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna market to my LinkedIn connections, and what's your strategy going to be for that? If I'm, if I'm marketing to my my family and friends connection, what's my strategy going to be for that? And so those are the types of things that you want to give some consideration to. We have a, a question here or some comments from Eric Watson. And he said, uh, when marketing, Maisha, because this is for you. Oh, so okay, get, so get, yes. So get ready. To, so make us look good, Maisha. We're depending on you. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. When marketing, what do you feel is most important? Personal branding or product branding? Should you focus more on the person or the product when marketing? I was taught that people don't buy products, they buy people. So building relationships is most important. (laughs) So that's an excellent question. And I think you answered it yourself. So we'll talk about launching. So when you're first launching something, I think your personal brand becomes very important. So that's when you are tying in your product to your to your personal brand. Once you build momentum and you have sales, then you need to shift because you're hopefully constantly adding new products or or services to your line to more product. But I think now, especially today, your personal brand becomes even more important when you are starting up. I think you wanna shift your personal brand to your business brand because that's how you're gonna grow outside of people who know you. I think Ted says it best, we have asked our friends and our family and our cousins and our second cousin, third cousins to support us, but eventually they have no more money to spend with us. So you need to shift over to a business brand, which allows you to get customers outside of your immediate circle. Your goal is to get customers outside of your immediate circle. So I think personal brand becomes important when you're launching so people trust you and they believe in you. But you need to shift to a business brand as you get more mature in your uh, in your business. Hope that answers your question, Mr. Mr. Watson. Yeah, and if not, you can go ahead, Ted. No, go ahead. No, I'm saying I hope that answers your question. If not, then you know you can sign up for a meeting with me. We can talk about it a little bit more in depth because I don't know what the business is that you're talking about. It could be services, it could be products. Um, so that all of that comes into play. So we we talk about branding. We're talking about the total sum of how you're perceived to others. So if you want to set up a meeting with me, we can do that as well. But I but I do think that they they cross, right? Because you want everyone to know what you do, right? The last thing you want is a friend or family say, oh yeah, I just signed this major account with someone for marketing. You're like, what? <laughs> Didn't you know that's what I do? I'm Aisha, I didn't know that's what you did. <laughs> like, we never talk about that, Maisha. We only talk about where we're going to dinner, what's going on, what's our next movie. You never said to me that you did marketing, right? So you need to make sure that, you know, like there's no one that knows Ted Fields 
that doesn't know Terry Phelps has an IT company called New Corp. <laughs> they may even think that my last name is Ted New Corp Vision. Like, I'm going to make sure <laughs> that they know what I'm going to do. Now, you got to find that fit, right? Because you don't want them to be like, oh, here you go again. Right, here you go. But you're going to know, right? Because, you know, it's not going to be, oh, man, I wish I had known that you did that. No. So I do think that, you know, you, you have to leverage, you know, all your, your, your connections, all your ways of getting messages out there so that people know that this is what you what you do. You don't necessarily hard sell your family and friends, but you do want them to know that you do marketing. If not even right. just for referrals, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, I was just you know, about to the, say right, that, Sharon. Right. That's the that's the minimum. At least that's they can it. refer people to you. So now people have a need if a people have a need for you, like you know, just like Gina. She does taxes. She don't have to advertise anything about doing taxes because people are all the time are like, Oh, can you help me with my taxes? I'm in trouble. Right? Like they'll they'll remember certain things like that and they'll say, Okay, yeah, I, I know this person does taxes, or I know this person does heating and air conditioning if the heating and air conditioning go out. And let me so people know me through a few a few channels. So my personal brand though is I help entrepreneurs get to the next level. They know that through my Aisha's Lemonade stand. That's my blog where I talk about topics that are meaningful to be an entrepreneur. They now know me through the What Now movement, which is all about helping entrepreneurs and career professionals get to the next level. The last adventure I started, QBob, is all about Black-owned brands getting to the next level. So your personal brand is so important, but it's also important for you. And I think you said it, that you ask your people to do what you want them to do. I want you to support me here. I need you to buy something here. I need you to refer, uh, refer me to others here, whatever it is. But I think you need to, and, and you'll do this with your personal brand. You'll create your mission statement of who you want to be perceived, how you want to be perceived, and your vision statement. So if you could do your own personal mission and vision statement, that helps you solidify what you're talking about. Because I can go all day about, oh, this is what I do with it. Keep it simple. I help entrepreneurs get to the next yeah. level through marketing and now through the what now movement. And Maisha, that really, it, to me, it brings up um, the topic of brand confusion, um, which <laughs> comes up a lot. Um, and, and I'm just going to give an example on, on, on television that's been recent. I don't know who watched uh, The Real Housewives, but on The Potomac Housewives, Dr. Wendy Osefo, she's right here in this area, a well-known political commentator. They have been on her so hard because she started a candle business, right? Wondering how can you go from this to this? And so this could be a definite topic later, but how can people who want to do different things that may not coincide with each other stand out and not give people that brand confusion? Um, because that happens so often. That's a, you know, Dr. Sharon, I think that's what's happening with me with the last business. So, you know, I think we have to be true. To, so let's say this, you need to be true to your authentic self, mm -hmm. right? If you are your authentic self 100% of the time, the brand confusion will go away. You also, and I don't know the you know Real Housewives, that drama, but you also just have to do it. Like you really can't let oh, other people tell you who you are and who you're supposed to be, exactly. regardless of the platform. I believe that that mm -hmm. you're on. I mean, I think you would be a, a great example. And how do you keep all of your businesses? Because it reminded me of myself when they <laughs> was, you know, when they were doing that. You know, how you are principal, but now you're doing this and you're doing, you know. And so I was like, you know, that's a great topic to get into later. But yeah, I so I think we should do because if I go that be authentic, be who you are. And when you're talking about personal branding, business branding, stay on your message, right? So who I say I help entrepreneurs. That's my message. How I do that, you can talk to me more about it, but stay on your message. So you can have her call me too. We could do a branding workshop for her. <laughs> yeah. But but I do think I think yeah, it helps we have to this question and we have Cedric Scott has a question. He says, what are your thoughts on needs-based businesses versus passion projects businesses? Oh, wow. Okay. Hi, Cedric. There's some, there's some good stuff in the chat Great here. Question. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Cedric Thank you. Scott. I'm going to make sure your question gets out there. So Cedric, also, I want to say he is our uh, sponsor, our new Coffee and Conversation sponsor, Asian Baby Brand. We'll do more on that later. Um, so I don't know why they... So 
marketing business management business school says find a need and fulfill it right so mm -hmm. you want to be able to enter the market with uh something that somebody needs now the passion piece i think is and this is what i'm doing with cubot is trying to find what separates you from the other people in your market so i don't think there's a direct correlation need space is for instance the what's the, the, the most famous the post-it pad somebody didn't know they needed a way to mark things on there so post-it pads is now 3m which is now three billion dollar three thirty billion dollar company but i think we all start off with the passion to either start something or we start with the passion to fill a need so i'm not sure if i understand your question but i think you can do both but if you find a need that you're passionate about you're going to change the market you're going to be that game changer that Facebook has been for us for all these years. I think when you find what lights your heart up, it can be the same. They can really be yeah. one and the same, right? So what break, I, I think Jay Shetty says it, what breaks your heart and then go out and find the solution to that, right? So maybe what's on your heart and what you seek to create a path forward for or solve in the world is the project, right? And so you're, so you're meeting a need and you also have a passion for the solution or a particular audience or group that you choose to serve. It feels like it could very be one, very much one in the same, uh, depending on the area and the niche you choose to land in. Fantastic. Yeah. So I mean, we're talking about- I'm oh, sorry, the Well, Now Movement is the founders seeing a need and now feeling it, but I think our passion is what drives us to continue to do this business. So it can be yeah, absolutely. Now that's a great point. And this is a good time, actually. You know, we're talking about Cedric Scott had a question. This is the perfect time for a coffee break, right? It's coffee and conversation. You have to take a coffee break every now and then. So th this is the perfect time. <sighs> this is the perfect time to go to the coffee break and we'll talk about our sponsor for coffee and conversation. Cedric, Scott, Maisha, you want to give give the people some details about our sponsor, Cedric Scott. And I'm actually going to have his uh, website showing here in just a second as well. All right. So Asia Baby Brand. Hold on. Let me go to my notes because I thought that Eric would do it with his lovely voice. <laughs> <laughs> I think we volunteered you before you. Uh, oh, OK. No problem. <laughs> I am not. No problem. So Asian Baby Baby, let me just say that is a member of the What Now movement. So we're very happy that he's able to join us as our sponsor. I saw that he had coffee. And when I saw that he had coffee, I recognized that, oh, coffee, coffee and conversations. Let me call him. So he has a whole line of things that he does under Asian Baby Brand, but his coffee, which we hope we up, the website's up, has consists of whole beans, grounds, and K cups with a variety of flavor, boldness from African espresso to cinnamon and caramel. So we can't wait to get our coffee. But the most important thing I think that we want to say about Asian Baby Brand is every purchase you make goes to fund scholarships in STEM and trade education. He started this company named after his mother who he lost 10 years ago to help kids, I wanna say from elementary to high school, get into the science, technology, engineering and math of profession. And I think Ted will understand the importance of that. I think America understands the importance of that. So Asian Baby ran every product they have as you see math learning for youth, financial literacy, literature, as well as the coffee, every purchase goes to spend fund and scholarships. And we'll have more from Cedric next month when he can do his own pitch because he uh, he's a fatherpreneur and he's uh, taking care of his sick um, mom right now. But we welcome Cedric and Asian Baby Rand to the What Now Movement family. We look forward to hearing more from him. And we hope you all go to his website, make a purchase today and help support the, the use of tomorrow. Help support the use of tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Or help, help support the youth of tomorrow today. Today, right, youth of tomorrow today. Thank Don't you. wait till tomorrow to support them. Let's support them today. For sure. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Now this okay. is this is a great cause, a great offering. Make sure you visit ancientbabybrand.com and make your purchase today. All right, fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm stop sharing my screen, and as I'm doing that, uh, I'm gonna throw this to Ted. We're talking about getting ready for 22, and Ted, as you know, we we get a lot of questions from people who are looking to do business with the federal government. Mm, yeah. And so you, you want to give the let's give people some insights as far as they want to do business with the federal government. They see the opportunities that are available to take their operation to a whole other level financially. What are some things that people need to have prepared uh, getting ready for 22 as it relates to doing business with the federal government? So so with the federal government, the, you know, the federal government buys just about everything. Right. You know, you may be just thinking that they you know, purchase military equipment, but there's uniforms that they purchase. There's um, the, there's you know landscaping, food services, IT, just about anything the federal government purchases. Right. So if you're interested in in, in doing that, you first want to get out there and get yourself registered. And so you want to go out to SBA.gov and. They kind of give you the how to's of getting set up, getting registered, what they're looking for. Right. The, also, the government also does a, a great job of just about every agency has a small and disadvantaged business utilization office that you can reach out to. And that they're doing they tend to do a lot of uh, kind of on site, uh, you know, kind of outreach, you know, whether you, it's a, you go to a you can go to these uh, these different organizations or virtual events. Well, they they have people that that's their responsibility to help small businesses that are interested in doing business with their agency, and where to go and to show them where those opportunities are listed so that you can best position your organization to to bid. But again, you know, it's you know, if you're, you're looking at the federal government as a customer, you know, you're going to have to be patient, be persistent, know that you're not the only one that's trying to to sell whatever your services are. And uh, but there's a lot of opportunities out there, a lot of agencies out there you know, that that's something that you're interested in. I you know definitely recommend that you go to sba.gov and you know they have some some pretty uh, straightforward tips on you know how to how to get started. Oh, that's great, and it should be said. I mean, you you had your IT gov IT consulting company doing business with the federal government. For over 25 years mm -hmm. and i like to say that you've forgotten more about doing business with the government than the typical person knows so hopefully, hopefully people recognize that uh, and, and there's a question that i got on that is hey i i don't i'm new to the government space i want to do business with the government how do i get past the learning curve and the like the, the unique language that happens in the federal government did you have any thoughts on that ted I mean, you want to, you know, try to uh, connect yourself with people that have already done it. When I first started my company, I met with probably five to ten CEOs of, of company of, of 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 CEOs that had IT companies. You know, because people will sit and talk to you, right, and ask them how did they get started. You know, what are some of the you know some of the things, uh, challenges, pitfalls, what have you. And then I had a list of those things from each of those CEOs. And then that kind of helped me along with, you know, SBA seminars to determine, okay, here's kind of my checklist on on what to do. I think getting mentors is is in anything is good. And again, there's some people that, you know, you know, they may be willing to block a couple hours aside to, to sit down and talk to you or um, consultants, you know, again, you know, when you're just getting started, you probably don't have, you know, a lot of money. Right. But, you know, services like what we offer here within the what now movement to just get some, you know, some some general help and ask, you know, asking of a, a you know, place that you can ask some questions is always uh, is always good. And then there's just so much information out there on the Web on just about everything. I've seen YouTube uh, uh, types of uh, videos out there with people that are, you know, sharing information and lessons learned. So. No, that's great. It looks like we have a, a question from Eric Watson. Would you recommend first partnering with a large 
more experienced business to gain documented experience and to gain a reputation in your service area. I mean, if, if you have an opportunity to partner with the large, you know, that would be great. If you have an opportunity to partner with any company that's that's had some experience in there, small, um, medium size, that, that's been there, you know, I think that's uh, that will be a, a great, uh, great chance for you to just kind of get in there, get an understanding of, you know, of, of what you're of what you're doing. But any way to get a foot in the door. Right. Because, you know, we all want like a prime contract. Right. That contract that comes to my company, your company. But if there's an opportunity to subcontract with someone, even at a small scale, I mean, again, it's an opportunity for you to to learn and then kind of build and, and grow. So. Ted, when, yes. when you start when you started New Core Vision, were you mm-hmm. working full time or how did like, for instance, were you working full time then decided to start a business or you just always knew you're going to start it? How did you even have this idea? No, that's a that's a great question. So I was working full time for the federal government and uh, started the company along with some some friends and uh, we were doing it kind of evening weekend. So I was doing the full time thing and then the evening weekend, if there were law firms, churches, whoever would uh, be willing to give us an opportunity to to install computer networks in their offices. I mean, it was great. You know, I could think of right now, and it seems so. One of our first big contracts was like two hundred dollars a month, right? Just supporting our church and going in and putting in a computer network there. And so you just get the opportunities wherever you can. And then what happened from that is I left the government and then just consulted myself out. And that's the thing that a lot of people do is is you your your first contract is you finding some way to to get someone to just buy you right, by the services that you have, because your company, you need past performance. So initially when you start your past performance is your resume. And so I, when I left the government, one of our our largest contracts at that time was me going out to a large business as the, you know, the question said, and, and, and being the resource on that contract. That goes back to personal branding, huh? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. For sure. Good question. But but I would I would encourage if you're watching us right now and you want to do business with the federal government, I would encourage you not to be a lone ranger about it. I would reach out to mentors. I would partner with the What Now movement. And Ted, like I said, Ted has been there, done that, has the T-shirt, and he yeah. can definitely uh, we can help you within the movement to do business with the federal government and exceed your financial goals as it relates to that. Definitely something to keep in mind. So next, Dr. Sharon. Dr. Sharon, uh, we're talking about getting ready for 2022. I mean, you're you're like the education guru (laughs) in the space. What should people in the education field be thinking about? What are some tips you have for educators to get ready for 2022? Well, and and mine is not specifically to educators, but really anyone. Um, I have two things that I do um, quite often. It goes back to you, um, Eric, what you said is not really wait till the end of the year to to do all of this. Um, But I live by Michael Hyatt's three by three goal achievement strategy. Totally live by that. And what he says in that achievement strategy is that you have to. So once you identify what your annual goals are, what you want to achieve by the end of the year, You then identify three big quarterly goals, three big weekly goals, and three big daily goals. And so he says that if you do that, and I am I am definitely a witness that it does happen. Because one of the things that we find is we have a lot of stuff going on. You can't achieve everything, right? And so when you focus on a smaller amount, you get more things done. And Ted, you say that a lot um, about, okay, so what are we really focusing on here? What What's the outcome? And so that's what that three by three achievement goal really helps you do. You identify those lofty goals, but then you break it down, as you said before. The next thing is I'm a protocol girl. I love protocols. The stop, start, continue, change protocol I do with my staff as an educator, but I also do in my business. And it's real simple. You list all the things that you need to stop, all the things that you need to start, all the things you need to continue, and all the things you need to change. 
And if you do that on a regular basis, that goes back to my act, assess and adjust, then you are constantly making those necessary adjustments. And so we do that as a team of educators, we do that on a quarterly basis. Because anything that's on that stop column, guess what? It needs to stop if, if it's not proving to be beneficial. And so you can do that in education, you can do that personally, and you can do that in your business. And so it's just some a real simple activity that you can do that will yield so many benefits. No, that's, that's fantastic. So the, the question I have here is, so if I set these daily goals and what should my strategy be if I miss on my goals? If I don't achieve my goals, what should I be? What's the, what are some things I should be thinking about? Right. And so that happens. And so for me, I get ready for my day the day before, of course, and hopefully everyone else is doing that at the end of my day. And I'm thinking school now, I'm thinking education. Um, I know what I had planned for the day and any educator out there, especially an educational leader, you know that the things on your list for the day can get shot because so many other things come up before that. And so you are constantly adjusting your goals for the next day. And so what I did not get done, I got to readjust those things for the next day. And so that becomes now one of my daily goals for the next day. The same thing for the week. At the end of the week, what I did not get accomplished for that week, if it was in my back, big three, that one is then put over to the next week. And so you have to be realistic and know that you're not going to meet every goal um, because there are things that come. You know, those, uh, you know, I love Stephen um, Covey's urgent and important. And so those things that come that are urgent, you got to take care of. They might be important, but if it's a fire that you need to put out, you know that that takes precedent over everything. No, that's uh, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. And, and like, I, you're right. I think that applies to people in education. That, apply, that applies just about everybody. I'm it, taking notes. <laughs> I know. I took my notebook out. I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, that's great. Uh, and then next, uh, Dawn, you are in that professional development and you, you you, you always caution us to stay in our zone of genius. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got people who they're looking to position themselves to get promoted in 2022 and take that next step. So when it comes to that professional development, what are some things that people need to consider to be ready for 2022? Yeah, so I have a couple of things and it's funny, as I listen to each of you share, I immediately have a book in mind that supports that concept, right? And so I am constantly feeding my mind and consuming information that can allow me to speak into people as I engage with them. And so a lot of my tips often come from things I've read um, or podcasts I've listened to. Audiobook is a great opportunity for me to multitask, but also consume some of that great knowledge. So Impact Players by Liz Wiseman is a new book I just recently read. And I listened to that introduction and I felt like she was speaking directly to me because that is how I navigate my career. And you know, some of the concepts in that book speak to um, taking a look at what the collective needs within your team or organization and being a solutions oriented person, stepping forward to fill that gap, to offer to support. So not only just reaching out to senior leadership and saying, I see this, but can I help? And this is how I can help, right? And the likelihood is they're gonna say, yes, that's great. Right, because they need someone that's willing to always step up and step in. And so being willing to take a look at what's necessary also creates space for you to demonstrate your value. Um, and so you become the person that people talk about when you're not in the room in a positive way. Um, some of my team jokes that all roads lead back to me. If they don't know the answer, often I do, or I will help figure it out. Um, the other thing that comes to mind that I learned a few years ago, which I value greatly and I would invite everyone to consider, is building a personal advisory board. I think a lot of businesses uh, build a advisory board if they have a product or a service and they want to get expertise from various people. But I believe that I need a personal advisory board for all of the areas that I desire to grow and stretch. And so whether that be spiritually, financially, in leadership and in business, in, in any area that you desire to expand, 
take a look at someone who you admire who does that work really well and who might be three to five years ahead of you ask them for a little bit of their time build a relationship there if you don't already have one and seek to set up some normal cadence to connect with them go to those conversations with questions and ideas and learn from them create space for yourself to grow by watching them and learning and then demonstrate your learning with each interaction they will feel that they're serving you but you will give so much more back and then you have the opportunity to create that ripple effect and so a personal advisory board would be a great recommendation for the upcoming year surround yourself with people who have different expertise than you different zone of genius and allow yourself to tap into that knowledge and sometimes what that leads you to is what do i need to outsource so that I can excel and move to the next level. Because maybe everything that I desire to create is not in my zone of genius. And so how can I partner with people, subject matter experts, or just others in the space that can help me amplify my impact by working together collectively and learning from those individuals in your life? That's great. No, that's awesome. So I have a question here. So you mentioned the, the zone of genius what, what, what do I do if this I, I, there's something that I'm good at, but I, it's not necessarily my zone of genius, right? I, I, I'm good at it. I do it well, but it's, it's, I'm, it's not my zone of genius. What, what, what advice do you have for that person who's in that situation? Well, let me ask one question. So then what is a zone of genius? Let's be clear on what that is, right? Because if you're good at it, that, that doesn't make it your zone of gen, genius, Don? So for me, Zone of Genius, um, well, there's a book called The Big Leap that talks about this as well. Um, but the way that I've adapted it to my everyday life is something that I do easily and freely. It comes very naturally to me. I do it in all spaces that I exist. So leading with a servant heart, empathy, communication, conversation, allowing people to feel seen and heard, that is my Zone of Genius. I do that in all spaces that I exist. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I leverage that? in my everyday life and my work experience, that's tapping into my zone of genius and bringing that to the people that I serve. Mm. Um, and so thinking about Eric's question in something that I, I'm good at, something I can do, doesn't necessarily mean it's something I should do, number one. Mm. Number two, if it's something that you desire to cultivate and grow through, it's great, lean into it. If it's something that lights your heart up and you wanna, you're curious about it, I would lean into that and seek someone who could be a mentor or a coach or a guide to, to help you strengthen that muscle. But I would separate that from zone of genius. And I would think more about that as like a strength or a talent that you desire to cultivate. Hmm. No, that's great. And I'm glad you just help people to kind of understand that distinction. I think it's easy to get stuck, you know, doing things. You think I, just because I'm good at it, this is something I should be doing. And that's not necessarily the case. So no, that that's great. I appreciate you for sharing that, Dawn. Now, th this has been an awesome episode of Coffee and Conversation. Hey, Eric, I was I was wondering if it would be good if each person was able to maybe leave a, a last kind of um, statement for yeah. if people are getting ready for 2022. Because I think we've had we provided some. You know, I'm just sitting back and I'm like, man, I'm just listening to this team. And I'm like, I need to, you guys are going to end up being my advisory team because all the good <laughs> things I've gotten from you all, y'all been holding back. This has been great. So, yeah, if there's something, you know, maybe a quick something that you want to leave as, because this is all, again, about getting ready for 2022, right? So, I mean, if there's something that we can, that you may want to leave uh, with the, you know, with the viewers and listeners, uh, you know, that would be great. Sure. Yeah, um, I, I can start. So, so the thing I would want to leave with people would be don't allow perfect to become the enemy of progress. Mm. Right. You, you've got it. Maybe one of your goals is to complete a project and it looks so overwhelming. And the easiest thing to do is nothing. Right. And you don't want to do we, we don't know what to do. But focus on pr progress and not necessarily having it all figured out right up front. Like what's the next best step you can take? And it could be like Dawn had mentioned about finding mentors. Find somebody who has done what you're attempting to do. But don't allow perfect to become the enemy of progress. That's what I'd like to leave with you. All right. So we'll go, Maisha, any closing thoughts? 
<laughs> I'm always multitasking. Yes. Um, so I want <laughs> everyone to take everything in that we said, but I think I want to leave you with always ask. Uh, at least think about when Dawn was talking, maybe the one thing you can do to get promoted is to ask the person who is in charge of your promotion, what, do, what can I do? Or why haven't I got promoted? Like have that, hopefully that dialogue so that you can have an honest conversation about what you need to do, what you need to fix, what you can work on, blah, blah, blah. And then of course, take Dawn's advice. And then for those of us in business, we're talking about personal branding and reaching out. Make sure you ask the people who you need to ask to buy, sell, to buy your products or to recommend you. So always ask is what, what I think the model should be for 2022. Great. Always ask. All right. That's good stuff, Ted. I think uh, the for me, it's it, it's just it's we we have no problem usually with coming up with goals, but let's let's make it our goal this year to complete the goals, right? No, I mean it's easy just to say I'm going to do this, I'm going to do these things, but commit to completing it. And as you mentioned earlier, Eric, if you can fast forward into December of 2022 and you look at you know, what you said in December of 2021, are you going to be pleased? Or are you going to just be back to the drawing board, throwing back up some more, some more goals? So your goal should be to really truly commit to completing the goals and doing all that you can to, to make that happen so that you're not just kind of pushing goals each year, saying the same thing, right? Cause at some point somebody gonna be like, man, you've been saying that for the past five years. You were not trying to lose no weight. You still look, look, you still got the chili dog in your hand. Don't tell me that, that that's what you're going to do. No, no, no. I'm telling you, seriously, seriously, June, January 1st, I, I'm going to stop doing this. No, I mean, really commit to, to achieving the goals that you, that you set. Great. Great. Okay. Dr. Sharon. So my parting words would be change is not the enemy fear is. And so I just want everyone to know that it's okay to make a change. That's what WNM What Now Movement is all about, right? Pivoting. And so don't wait until the end of anything to make that change. If you see a change is necessary, assess it and make the change when you need to make it. Change is not the enemy, fear is. Change is not the enemy, fear is. Well said. That's good. All right. I'm telling you, Dr. Sharon, man. I, no, I wish I would have said that. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm just dropping these nuggets of wisdom. I, I got a lot of I, I got a lot of things I need to borrow from Dr. Sharon on my right. next presentations. Man. And who's after <laughs> Dr. Sharon? <laughs> right. So Dawn, what, what are your closing oh, thoughts? She's good. She got her, she's ready. Let her let her she put pressure. Like I got, she good. I she I know she's gonna kill it. Okay, you gotta kill it. All right, you ready? No. Um, we're not meant to do this alone. So collaboration, networking, partnering, the opportunity is on the other side of yes. You All need right. to say yes to yourself. You need to say yes to the opportunity and surround yourself with the people that will make it happen. Wow. Opportunity is on the other side of yes. Now, if you if you're not ready for 2022 by now, man, you're not gonna ever be ready, man. This is that was, this is some good stuff. Sure, for sure. And just, just a couple of closing things I want to bring out before we we sign off for this episode is don't forget we're looking we're always looking for great subject matter experts. And since we since the last time we we did the coffee and conversation, we've we've had several uh, to join us in various fields. Uh, so if you, uh, you can definitely reach out to us uh, as a subject matter expert, if your expertise is in leadership or marketing or any of these other areas, um, just reach out to us because we are looking to add to our subject matter expert database. So when we get opportunities where people want to bring in an expert in leadership, we want to be able to reach out to you, for example, if that's your area of expertise. So yeah, again, go to whatnowmovement at gmail.com if you're interested in being a what now movement subject matter expert. And, and 
even if you, if you just want a t-shirt like this one and they, they also I, I hear they also come in black too ted oh you won't <laughs> get that you don't that's a rumor i hear that they come in black, get the but, black. yeah same thing you can email we, we'll get you one of those uh, i've been hearing some requests for that as well uh we're also looking for people to fill out the, the different days you know in the what now movement group we've got marketing or motivational monday time management tuesday wellness wednesday thankful thursday fitness friday so we're looking for people that want to come on and talk for 10 10 15 minutes about your specific business and how it ties to the theme for the day, for today and, and again yeah. Gives you good visibility and opportunities for yourself. Ted, were you about to say something? And if you want to be a future sponsor of, of yes. call and conversations. And we really appreciate the, the questions in the chat, right? Because, you know, we feel we have some subject matter experts within the What Now movement, but all of you are part of the movement and you're subject matter experts within the What Now, within the, uh, the What Now movement as well. We, we just, we're just the ones here on the screen. So this is a community. Right, just bringing years and years of experience and resources. So we appreciate you, you know, joining in, asking questions. Bring a friend next time. I think there's just so much information out here for you to, to, to be able to learn and leverage from within this within this community that we have here. Absolutely, no, that that's a great point. If you'd like to sponsor, be a sponsor on Coffee and Conversation, um, what now movement at gmail.com. Make sure you email us for that. And now it's time to sign off. This has been a great episode. Thank you once again to Cedric Scott Jr., our sponsor for this episode, ancientbabybrand.com. Make sure you go and you check out his website. We certainly are thankful for him. We're thankful for those of you who are watching us. And until next time, have a great one. Thank you all.